Today's story of life on the radio is humor mixed with tragedy. Uh, the tragedy was something I had to cover as a reporter for UPI Radio Network. The humor came after that. And uh, it, it was a, a tragic time. What happened, basically, I was uh, working as the uh, national, one of the national correspondents of my uh, colleague, Bob Fuss, who was the bureau chief as well at the time, in 1989, in August of 1989. And I was working in Los Angeles as, as the correspond, one of the correspondents. And what happened was uh, Congressman Mickey Leland, who was a Texas congressman from the Houston area, uh, a black congressman, uh, was killed in a plane crash in Africa. And everybody on board was killed. It was a you know, small plane, but it was just a tragic situation. So they were in Houston in August. They were going to have uh, his uh, memorial. And Jesse Jackson was going to be there to speak. And uh, obviously a whole, whole bunch of other prominent people. So they, they told me my assignment was to go down and cover the funeral, uh, which I did. Well, while I was there, we also did a, a weekly program, which was like three minutes long, uh, long, short, long form programming for UPI called A View from the West. And it had, uh, had to be something where we, we really kind of went somewhere, or covered a story and did a, a feature story on something in the Western United States. And I'd always wanted to go to the Texas um, uh, Prison Museum in uh, Hunt, uh, Huntsville, Texas. And that's where the main prison is in Huntsville and where the executions take place and, or took place at that time. And so I, I kind of wanted to go in and do the history of it. And there was another reason, too. I was working on another story that had a throwback to someone else uh, in history who actually spent time in the um, Texas prison at Huntsville. And they had a museum there. So I had made arrangements to go there after I covered the funeral and found all my stories there to go up to Huntsville and, you know, do that story and then fly back to Los Angeles. So um, it's, I've been to Houston like three times in my life. Every time in August, there was a Republican convention, a sports card convention, and then Mickey Leland's funeral. And if you know anything about Houston or South Texas, it's the worst month of the year to be in Houston, it's hot, it's humid, you walk outside, you can't hardly breathe, and 10 seconds you're drenched in sweat. So it was, I got to my hotel room, which was at a Hilton Hotel, an old Hilton, and I would turn the air conditioner on, one of those wall heat, wall air conditioners out, and uh, tells you how old this place was. And we covered uh, the funeral, Jesse spoke, uh, did an interview with Jesse Jackson, and uh, then, you know, we, we covered the funeral, and uh, the Honorable Mickey Leland was laid to rest. And then after that, I drove up to Huntsville, and I met with the curator of the Huntsville Prison Museum. And he took me into the bowels of the museum, uh, or the bowels of the prison, all the way down. There was like three, two or three stories below the surface. And that's where all the records were kept. And it's these giant books that have all the entries of who anybody and everybody who spent time in the prison and told who they were and what they were there for and when they got out. And I got to match up some of the stuff for that story I was working on, um, which we never really I don't think we really did much with it, but it was kind of a cool story about going back in time and reliving past lives. And we did it with uh, some psychologist who did that sort of thing, sort of thing. It was just kind of fun. And but anyway, so I wanted to do the story on the Texas Prison Museum. Well, the Texas Prison Museum has lots of stuff in it, has uh, the, all the Bonnie and Clyde stuff at the time. And because Bonnie and Clyde were killed in Texas in a major shootout and uh, they had uh, Woody Harrelson's dad, the actor Woody Harrelson from Cheers and uh, several other films. Um, his dad was uh, a convicted murderer who spent time there. And they had his uh, walking stick, which in the end had a shiv. There was a knife that popped out of the bottom and uh, all sorts of other stuff. I mean, it was really, really kind of a fascinating museum. And it's a storefront. That's all it is. It's a storefront in downtown Huntsville. So the other, the guy asked me, the curator, he says, would you like to see Old Sparky? Old Sparky was the retired electric chair. And I said, yeah, of course I would, you know. So we go into the room <laughs> where, where Old Sparky is. And Old Sparky is really basically an old wooden chair. That it is the most uncomfortable chair. You asked me if I wanted to sit in it. And of course I said, yes. And um, it's just 
straight like this. I mean, there's no curve at all. I mean, you sit in it, you are in the most uncomfortable position, which, you know, really kind of is sad when you're getting ready to die and you have to be in a most uncomfortable position in, in, in those last few moments. So I sat in the chair and he goes, would you like to be strapped in? I said, yeah, sure. You know, so he straps in my legs and he straps in my arms. It's, it's leather straps, you know, and kind of over like I'm sitting like this, you know. And um, so he says, uh, well, let me put the, the, the cap on, the cap, you know, which they have to do. And there's a procedure for electrocution um, in an electric chair, all the things you have to do. And you've probably read about it. You've seen it on Shawshank in the movie, the Shawshank, or no, not the Shawshank, in the, the movie, The Green Mile with Tom Hanks, which was... Um, uh, a film made several years ago, uh, which highlighted that that sort of thing. So you probably know about that. And if you haven't watched the film, it's a great film. And it's one of, one of uh, the best that I think Hank, Hanks has ever done. Um, so they put the, the cap on me and they didn't wet it, of course, because I wasn't going to be electrocuted. And uh, so, and I had my tape recorder on my, my lap and he says, would you like the mask of death? And I said, yeah. So I took my glasses off and they put this leather strap across behind my ears and across my face. And there's just two little dinky little slits that you really can't even see out of. You know, you can detect light and that kind of thing. So he puts that on me. And now I, I'm in the same position as someone who is set to die in the electric chair. And I started my tape recorder and I just started talking because I wanted to do this for to give people the feel of what that might be like and give myself the feel of what that might be like and um not that i ever want to be there but uh, just that type of situation and as i'm talking i'm talking about i got the um the uh my arms are strapped down you're thinking of your last moments and what your life has become and why you're there and the sorrow and you know knowing that these are your last moments in life and you've got the mask of death on and i'm talking into my microphone just like that and into my tape recorder and all of a sudden he decides to really pull it on me and he takes the light switch and flips it on and off real quick and, and i just about jumped through the roof it was like my heart starts racing <laughs> it's like because that is what you imagine and that's what happens the lights dim and they kind of flicker when that happens when they turn on the juice to electrocute someone and it was the his <laughs> feeling and after my heart came back to into my my chest which took probably a few minutes he's laughing he is just laughing his butt off over there at my reaction and it took me a few minutes but then i started laughing as well um no it's not a funny thing but at the same time it is and you just kind of realize where you are in the moment and um yeah my heart jumped through the roof along with uh, the lights being switched so that was my moment i went back i i took that audio uh finished the tour uh flew back drove back to Houston to where I had to leave from and uh, thought about this all the way back and then flew home, put the piece together and we had our view from the West. But um, just another day of life on the radio. We'll have another one for you tomorrow. Thanks.